Fisheries Eye is supported by the USAID from the American people. Fish, an important source of protein for millions worldwide, touted for its health benefits. But have you ever wondered the path it takes from the sea to the plate on your table? Our team went exploring. In Ghana's coastal communities, fishermen braved the ocean to bring in the day's catch. Soon after, the fish processors gather, scrambling in their bid to secure some fish for sale. <laughs> Evidently, the journey from the sea to the table is fraught with risks, not only related to illegal fishing practices, but also unsafe fish processing. <laughs> it's a sunny afternoon, and as usual, most women are in their homes processing fish for sale. I stepped into a fish processing home expecting industry standards. Instead, I found a startling reality. Fish lay scattered on the bare floor, trampled by workers in casual footwear. Liquid wastes seeped into the ground, a grim reminder of unsanitary conditions. No gloves, no aprons, and no head coverings. Workers toiled in extreme heat, smoke filling the air and irritating their eyes. Yet, remarkably, they see nothing wrong with their methods. Safety concerns are ignored here. In Chomunda, you had the cement. You had the cement wall. And what? Hey, you say you shouldn't tell me. I'm not a man of law. And to say you have word the mere, and with that, you are cheap. In Chino, I never tell you. And I tell you, you know, I better when I was saying, oh, too, I'll be. In tell you, show me the wall, you be. Tell me my yana, the mala. I be you, show me my lopan. Local fish processors claim training programs benefits haven't trickled down to them yet. They say the only way they can adhere to safe fish processing is if they are equipped with adequate resources. The result, a hazardous work environment, compromising food safety and worker health. But Antiyama is not alone. Many other fishmongers here on their nearest Shia London beach are practicing unsafe fish processing methods. I visited another processing site expecting to see improved conditions. Instead, I found more alarming 
and unsafe processing practices. Fish destined for the Volta region were being wrapped in cement paper contaminated with dust and sand. Surfaces remain uncleaned and unwiped. Just smoked fish wrapped in filthy packaging. <laughs> The smoking equipment, dirty and rusty. And still, no protective gear, leaving her exposed to cement dust, smoke and bacteria. Unfortunately, the consumer is always at the receiving end with contaminated fish risking their health. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 420,000 cases of foodborne diseases are reported in Ghana each year, making them a significant public health issue. Clearly, the consequences of unsafe handling practices extend far beyond this community. Despite this, the Fisheries Commission says training has yielded some results. The handling aspect is um, also a bit of an issue here. But with, with, the, with the introduction of the Safe Fish Certification and Licensing Scheme, um, we are seeing improvements. We are seeing improvements in some aspects in some fishing communities, we are seeing improvements in there. Uh, but in as much as there, uh, there are improvements, there is more room also for improvement. But is there really improvement? Like he says, we visited the fish processing site for the National Fish Processors and Traders Association in 2nd D. NAFTA, established in March 2015, is an organization of fish processors and traders operating small and medium-scale fisheries businesses in Ghana. These fish processors here, although trained, are working in hazardous conditions with no protective gear. Clearly, fish processing is not a job for the weak world. As I stand here, my eyes are burning and they're tearing from the excessive smoke here. And of course, the heat here is unbearable. Imagine working in these conditions day in and day out with no respite. Uh, the physical uh, toll is evident, but the mental strain is just as concerning. These fish processors have to be in these conditions and it's making it even more difficult for them to follow safe fish handling processes. Millicent Aqua is fairly younger and more educated than most fish processors here. Despite passing through some training, she claims implementation of safe fish practices is a difficult task. She, however, admits some of the practices are being upheld. Every month, the break season is one week. One week, no baby, how about how be a new baby? I need be a true, what you true, and some of them, what papa, no fun, no new, what you true, and that, and other one, I'm no why a new way nine needs for one week, no, we will break for one week, and sunny, and sunny, I'll be beam. The enclosed space exacerbates the problem, trapping the smoke and heat. We 
couldn't film for more than five minutes without discomfort. Other trained fish processors still handle fish unsafely. Fish spread on the ground, no footwear, and blatant disregard for the hygienic practices. It's alarming how their methods mirror those of untrained processes. For the president of NAFTA in the Sekendita Credit District, she can only admonish workers to do better. <laughs> Improper processing can contaminate food with bacteria, viruses and parasites. The consequences for consumers can be devastating. It is evident that when communities adopt approved standards, there's a ripple effect on public health and economic growth. It's a no doubt that the journey from the sea to the table requires vigilance and adherence to approved standards. For a safer and more sustainable food chain, Strict enforcement of fish processing laws is crucial. So next time you eat fish, consider its journey. Insist on safe fish processing practices. Judith Brown for The Assignment. Fisheries Eye is supported by the USAID from the American people.